And I'm just saying, man, because um, it's real, though. That You can feel that thing, though. See, I think it's like this. Let me put the camera on you for a while. I think it's like this. Is that, like the other Pat was saying, is that we don't know what free will is. We have never known what free will is. Because we ain't ever been able to have the eyesight or the awakened spirit to hear the voices that don't belong to us, that really voices of demons, and we ain't had the eyesight to see the effect because we won't look in our life like that. But you know, that mug get a hold to you. Them, them brothers out there, them sisters out there, man, they ain't gonna tell me nothing. Cause I've been through it already. When I was in my innocence, Man, you don't have no sex with nobody. You just, you know, you infatuated by a woman. Yeah. You don't even want to be high on nothing. You don't want to yeah. be drunk. You looking forward. You thinking about this woman all day long. Yeah. She thinking about you all day long, too. Y'all can't wait to see each other. Generally, you get off work and you go hang with the fellas. You go get some beer. You go get something to drink. But when you get that woman or that man, you want to enjoy all of that. In your sober conscious, I mean, you looking the life out of all of it. And so when you do start being sexual, it's still a, a minor lust demon. It's a minor lust demon if you ain't, um, uh, if you ain't, um, uh, let me get, where my lights all at, man? Where my candle lights? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, so it's still a minor lust demon when we ain't pushing toward marriage, but those things don't get learned. Yeah. Until, because our parents ain't teaching us the will of God when we coming up. They ain't teaching us like that. What you need, some more tissue? Nah. Oh, here. Look in that sack. About two things of alcohol. Yeah, man. So, uh, are you listening to me, man? I am listening. So, our parents ain't bringing us up like that. So, usually when we first encounter the lust, we don't even realize that it's the dust demon. Because yeah. it jump out of a television that we've been pre-programmed to watch. Okay, this is this is what we do. So that lust demon jump out on you because you're watching cable TV. And like when I was coming up, you didn't have no lust demon really jumping out at you. Except for when you watch Gilligan Island or something like yeah. that. And, and you see Mary Ann. Uh, who's it? <laughs> no, Ginger. Yeah, with yeah, the real yeah. tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you like, yeah, you know. Yeah. But when cable TV came out. The lust demon, it runs his head up a little bit farther because they start having the exercise start chicks playing, on there. Yeah, no, the that's, exercise that's, chicks that's used to come on. Or, that's, that's, that's soft, uh, soft uh, centerfold porn, too. Hey, but see, night. this wasn't even no porn, no, on, on when cable first came out. Uh, it got started. They had these exercising chicks that would come on. At about three o'clock in the morning, yeah. and they'll be doing exercises. In white yeah, with that, yeah, 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 you know. So that lust demon start coming on. out a little bit. You know, what I mean? you, yeah, yeah. I mean, you young, and yeah. then you can start feeling movement in your body. You don't realize there's no demon. You don't realize that. And we ain't never exercised a free will or right to free choice because we ain't never knew what it was. You think. That you got a right. Let's let's give you an example. You think that you making the decision. Yeah. So but you ain't making the nah, decision. No, see, you ain't making no decision. Yeah. No, so how you gonna ever get to the point to no. where you can know whether it's you making the decision or it's a demon that you done yielded yourself to making the decision. Okay. How you gonna get to that point how you gonna know? to where you gonna know? Well, okay. That means that the most high has to open up your eyes. And you have to open up your spiritual ears. Because first, you got to be able to hear the voice that's telling you to do something else. You got to hear it as it's a voice. Not as it's just something that you're watching. See, that's where the great trick is. It's something that you're watching that's influencing you, but you ain't hearing no voice. And so you don't hear no voice. You don't understand what it is. Next thing you know, you're influenced by it. So, but you have to open yourself up but to whatever. But you know that that voice is there. Nah, you when, when you When you can start recognizing them voices that you hear. Right. 
you know what I'm saying? You know that it's there because it's always so a voice in there that tell you to go the other way. It's but you, generally, when you, you start being conscious of it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's from come from what? It come from the repercussion. Mm, yeah. You see? Yeah. And so when I'm telling you that when you first start being sexual with a woman or with a man, even if it's in a small, the smallest, the early stages of lust, because it's fornication, the most high don't hold that against us because we're ignorant of fornication because nine out of ten times, nobody have ever taught us about fornication. You see? And we, since we don't classify, we know what adultery is because we see all the married couples. But nobody never teach us what fornication is. And we think just becoming sexual is just a part of life. So we don't see that it's no demon that's hitting us with a spirit of lust that's going to lead her into greater debauchery. Bigger yeah. demons to come. Now, check this out. When you infatuated and you wholesome and you... You and that woman, y'all getting together and y'all this and that, the other. And then, here comes other demons that bring things to enhance your so-called relationship or whatever it is. So, you don't have the same type of sexuality with, a, with your mate in your sober and conscious state. That you have when y'all been out on a night of partying, yeah. drinking, and floor. smoking a little bit, and doing our thing. Hey, now the sexuality is skyrocketing. Yeah. It goes into the places to where yeah. in your natural mind you ain't even thought about. Yeah. Now that you are on something, it's intensified. Yeah. You see? So, man, and that's why when it comes to sexuality, man, we... We enter into some great debauchery when it comes to sexuality, but most cases, we have to be influenced by something external in order to go into that. So you find the brother that used to be able to be infatuated with the woman, now he done been exposed to a bigger lust demon that showed him how his sexuality can go through the roof when he's on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he can't do it no more, just straight. He can't be content with no woman, just straight. He got to have him some gin or some some vodka. He got to have some some you know whatever what them drugs they call it, man, that make man. you go long and they'll make you X pills and no. ecstasy and all yeah, that. Ecstasy. See, once you're exposed to that, then now this is what you designed to do. But what you don't understand is that that's not really you. The only that's way for you to understand is you is how you true. feel about it when you just wake up in the morning. Yeah. And how you feel about it when you just look at the woman, then you wake up, and then you, you know what I mean? Because, man, it's hard as heck trying to get back to square one. Once you them, you know? So that's what helps you to understand your free will. I don't think a lot of people recognize that, though. No, nah, no, nah, it's hard to recognize. It. That's why that's why the eyes of understanding have to be enlightened. Yeah. Or those that the Most High give them the ability to see these things for what they really are then he give them ability to be able to come and talk about it, to expose it to other people. You yeah. see? Yeah. Because, see, now one of the things that Elder Pat used to tell me is that one of the greatest ways for people to come to understand how they're going to hear the voice and how they're going to recognize the demons. First thing he said is that the demons are not there to destroy you because they can't destroy you. They live in another dimension of time and space. They do not live in this world that we live in. So he said they don't have the power to reach from their dimension and destroy you. They can only tempt you to allow them to use your body. Because what they want is that they want to be in this world and experience all the pleasures that they lost when God destroyed their bodies. And they want back into this world so that they can. So in order for them to experience the passion and the lust that this world have to offer that they once knew when they made it with the daughters of men, he said we have to 
be invited yeah, that's what into somebody's say. body. But invited. we can't just come in and rape them while they sober. Because in God giving them a, a spirit of power and, and a sound mind. So we can't influence them when they have a sound mind. But once we can get them to bring something externally into their vessel, now it yields to other things. But he said they can't harm you. They're not there to hurt you. They're there to teach you. And they're there to test you. They're there to teach you what? They teach us how to be able to discern God's voice, the voice of the spirit, from the voice of a demon. That's what they're there to teach us. He said, and they're there to test us. Because through the test is how we come to understand whether or not we are really hearing this thing. So he said one of the greatest ways for you to do this is to fast. He said because through the course of that 40 day fast that I had went through. He said at, after about two weeks. He said first you'll just go through some wrestling with what you're giving up. You know, three or four or five days a week, you know, you'll be focused on your body, you'll be focused on your hunger, not eating and this and that and the other. He said, but after about then you enter into that second week, he said your body will be then got adjusted to whatever it is that you fasting, and then the spirit will be giving you strength in your body. Now, but then he said, You will begin now to hear the voices, and you will understand. That it never was you as those voices come to tell you that you are hungry and the spirit is reminding you that you are fasting and the whole time you hear two sets of voices in your head and you remember one challenged you to do this and told you that this was going to happen and he said there you will see your free will when that voice come and you hear the voice of the spirit <laughs> now you in the place to where you can now Make a choice to choose which way you're going to go. So it's like not just the fast. When a person says, I'm going to honor the most high and I'm not going to be sexual anymore mm -hmm. until I find a man that was suitable for marriage. <sighs> You've been fornicating all your life. You've been in relationships for 10, 15, 20 years. Ain't never been married. You ain't never knew nothing else. But then you come to the place to where you say, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. That's like another fast. You're fasting now sexuality. That's abstinence. Okay. Then when you hear those voices and you remember, but that's what it's going to do. What you, how you think you're going to operate? Man. You're going to hear those voices. Man, Anything you decide to stop voice. doing, you're going to hear those voices trying to get you to do it. Yep. And it's at that point that you get to exercise your free will. So you can't say that the devil tricked me. Yeah. 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 You can't say the devil deceived me. You can't say the demon did all these things to me because God don't give the demon that type of power. He can't come into this world unless we allow him to come into it. And it feels so good. We can feel that pleasure that that demon leads us into. Man, when I'm married and I get the opportunity to bust another woman and thinking that I can get away with it and all that, hey man, that is some of the best sex any man will ever have. Yeah. It feels so good and so pleasurable. Uh -huh. But here's the thing. That's because it ain't you. Because it ain't you. It's the demon. So when you go and try to do it on your own, you don't get the same pleasure yeah. from it. He like, oh, no, nah, boy, I got you to understand. That was me. You can't go and make nothing feel that good, but I can. Let me in. Let me take the wheel. Let me take yeah. over. <laughs> I remember when I was young. Oh, wow. We used to hang out, right? And we learned how to do drugs at an early age. Yeah. I understand that, you know. Captain Von Zell Candy Store. It's where the kids got to hang out. Yeah. It's where we experienced a lot of things. It's where we learned how to hustle, where we learned how to smoke weed and everything. And, you know, it was all in the name of fun. Yeah. But, man, one day, one day it was a high school party at Lincoln High School. And, you know, we're still in high school. We like, I'm like, you know, 10, uh, 11th, 12th grade. And uh, 
And you know, every now and then the people come in, Cap put his weed out there and stuff like that. But you know, but uh, man, that dude said, hey, Beach, y'all want to taste something of this yellow? <laughs> he had some yellow tack. <laughs> I ain't never did that no more than we. <clears throat> we getting bigger lust demons, right? Yeah. Where the drugs is concerned. Uh -huh. We started out on weed in the first California coolers that came out. Now we're going bigger. We're about to try something else. So I'm like, well, I don't know, Cap. What's it going to do? What's it going to do? Cap spread his hand. It's going to make you feel like the king, like you're on top of the world. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. Yeah, I can go for that. <laughs> so, man, I took me a little snort. I didn't want to ever do too much because I didn't want to ever be, you know, on anything that was going to just shock me. So I was I already had a level of fear, but I went on and did it. And uh, and I came back in about 20 minutes later. Cap, I don't feel nothing. I don't feel nothing. He said, here, put a little bit on your tongue. Put a little my tongue got numb. Man, look. Man, I felt on top of the world the whole night. I left that candy store. It seemed like when I, when I walked out of there, everything was just bright and lit up. You know what I mean? I was levitating through there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I felt on top of the world. Yeah. Man, I stumbled across a white girl coming through out of the neighborhood out of nowhere. Man, it was the first time I ever did this. Yeah. And then we left there, man, and we went to the, um, the Lincoln. High school party. I, I was king of the world. I thought, man, my two-step ability was through the roof. Every woman in there <laughs> liked me. It was eight. It wasn't me. It wasn't me how I operate in my normal everyday life. Yeah. I didn't know it was a demon. I didn't know it was something that was controlling me. That was shining. Yeah. That's what demons do. Hey, everybody that's successful in this world, don't you think that they're successful just because they're successful? Some of these people have yielded themselves as yielded vessels to demons. And boy, when a demon get loose in you, it will shine like new money. Yeah. It'll shine like new money. It'll shine like new money and have you rolling in the best cars, drinking the finest wine, hanging with the finest women. But baby, when it drop you on the bus stop, you know that it wasn't you. <laughs> you know it wasn't you. Oh, wow. So it's like, you know, all these things happened to me, and I couldn't see that it wasn't me. It was a demon that was in control. Yeah. The only time that I could see me. I got to get that. No, I didn't know. If I, uh, I lost some people, but this was a, uh, this was a very important conversation that we've been having. Because you know what, one of the things that's contained in the writings of Paul, uh, it says is that I find that when I would do good, evil is always present with me. You see, that's because we cannot exclude ourselves from that that was already in the earth before we got here. You see, those demons were already in the earth before God ever said, let there be light. This was their place of captivity. So they are already here. But the Most High put his spirit in us. And then that is where our defense mechanism come from and gave us a right to make a choice. A right to free will is not a right to choose what you want to do. Because when you choose what you want to do versus what God wants you to do, then you have to understand that is not you that is doing that. Because God created us to, to do good works in this world and he put his spirit in us. So even when we are doing good works and operating out of good, it is not us that is doing it. It is the spirit that resides in us as yielded vessels that complete God's work in this world. And when you think, oh, well, I got a right to free will. You can't take my choice away. That is not your choice. Those people and women dealing with abortion and all that, a right to choose, a right to choose. No, they don't have no choice because any choice that goes against God's choice of life 
You're being controlled by a demon. God created you to do to, to good works and put his spirit in you. And it's at that moment that that thing comes into your mind. Well, you know, I ain't got no money. I done slipped up. I done got pregnant again. And, and I ain't no way out. You know what I'm saying? And, and we need to go and do this or it's happening with my career and this and that. Well, the first thing you need to understand is that you need to hear the voice of God's conviction telling you that if you wasn't fornicating and cheating, you would have a husband that would help you do these things. And so it would be all right to produce life because that's what I put you in this world to do, to be fruitful and to multiply. And anytime you think that something's wrong with producing life and being fruitful and multiplying, you're being controlled by a demon. Our sisters who are loving themselves more than they love the Father. You are not exercising your right to your free choice because you don't have no choice. You have given your choice to demons and you have allowed them to use your body in a way that is against the Most High when two women want to love each other. Yeah. Now, grant you, these messages are not personally aimed at anybody. These messages come based on the spirit that resides in me that's knowing what is right versus what is not right. It don't have nothing to do with whether or not I love you. If I come and tell you that you don't have no business to women, you're going against the very reason that God created you. I don't care what kind of laws that they pass. I have a right to choose to serve the most high rather than to serve what men said. And just because they put it in law brings you to a place to where now you can see clearly that you're under the control of demons. Because when you obey man's law, let me ask you a question. Go. No. You said them bigger demons come next. Mm-hmm. And then, then they come to totally corrupt you. Right. Mm -hmm. Corrupt you all the way. Right. If they can take you that far. Yes. If you don't realize that that's not you. They will take you that far. Because just take when you get drunk, for instance, you lose all of your ability to exercise the consciousness of a sound mind because you're no longer sound. You are now up under the influence. Now, listen at that. He got a DUI. He was driving under the influence. Okay, these are laws that have been put in place of this world. He was driving under the influence of what? Alcohol. No, nope. what's in the bottle? Beer, wine, and spirits. That once you go so far, you now come up under the influence of demonic spirits who now can have their way with you. Yeah. They can make you fall down. They can make you where your, your, your speech can't operate right. They can make, make you where you become hellish and, and tear up things and want to fight. Yeah. All of these things you would never do when you was in your sound mind. Mm -hmm. And the only thing about it is that because we have never been taught that this is what it is when we face each other on the next day. Boy, you was tripping last night. Boy, you was tripping. You don't even have the sense enough to understand. If I was tripping, that wasn't me. You talking to me right now. That dude right there that was last night, yeah. that wasn't me. Yeah. That was who I gave my yeah. body over and that's to why you. People be like, man, don't give him nothing to drink, man, because that demon come out of man. him. You so, know what I'm saying? So, you, you ever heard somebody say yeah. that about somebody? Yeah, and that's just how it is. But see, the thing is that people don't believe that they are demons. You see, what a demon is, is a demon is a disembodied spirit mm -hmm. who has passions and lusts that he cannot fulfill in this world because God took his body away. Mm -hmm. And his desire is that he go to and fro through the earth looking for a man and a woman that he can say, just let me in. And I'm going I'm to work out all of these pleasurable things mm -hmm. and you're going to feel the effects of it. <laughs> just like we feel the effect of what it is to be in the spirit. When you get that jolt of the spirit and make your eyes water and you're crying, that jolt of the spirit that make you shout hallelujah, that make you dance and just praise the Father, that jolt of the spirit that make you start thinking about all the wonderful things, that you, we are partakers of the feeling of the righteous spirit. And that thing bring, brings pleasure to our physical existence. Do it bring character to you? Of yeah. Yeah, it bring character yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. But see, it's equally. 
it's equally as the effect. And that's why we gravitate, man. That's why that's why the drug thing is so hard, man. I've been on drugs you know, you know all my life. Like, you know, man, I was out my character. You know they be out their character. Yeah, but see, they don't understand. But see, they wasn't out of their character because that wasn't them. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You see? It's the, because they under them. But forward. here's the thing. You will say you're out of your character. But see, guess what? The demon, it brings so much pleasure to you. That you look forward to yielding yourself to it. Yeah. Watch how many people, since this thing been happening where people ain't had to work, ain't had to do this. How many people you think have been completely contented with being in their sober and right frame of mind and consciousness? That right frame of mind and consciousness will make you come outside in the morning. It'll make you not want to miss it. No hour of the day. It'll make you come out and listen to the birds and look at the trees and your sober consciousness. Because your sober consciousness is now operating according to the spirit of the Most High. But how many people do you think can go through a whole entire day and remain like that? Yeah. Without, well, you know, I got to go to the store. What we going to the store for? <laughs> really we going to the store because when that demon bring that feeling, it's so pleasurable. Yeah. It's so good. You know, yeah. when I get to drinking and playing that music and yeah. drinking that Jack Daniels, you know what I mean? And feeling good. But that demon ain't never satisfied. And he going to say, hey, ain't enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's go get some weed. You know yeah. what I mean? Break out the primo. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Let's go do something. It, ain't, it don't stop. It don't, it don't stop. stop. Remember? Remember how you was high the last? Last time, yeah. how good it felt yeah. with what old such and such done to you, boy. Yeah, yeah. Let's go get it again. You know what I mean? And she waiting on you because she been controlled by the same thing. Yeah. See, she can't control her lust. Uh -huh. You see? Yeah. So it's one of those things, man. That, and you get in there and man. And, well, and, now, by that time, you're up under the, the see, what, what we got to understand too is see. That lust demon and that spirit demon that come out that liquor bottle, that's two demons. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Add them. Exactly. You see exactly. what I'm saying? That's Before what the, the Bible the said. Night, he you, said, you when, rolling a, with him. when a man <laughs> have swept his house clean and got rid of the demon, he said, that demon keep coming back, keep coming back, looking for a window to climb in. He said, and when that man let him back in, he go call all his friends, and he brings yeah. seven more demons, yeah. seven times more stronger than him. That's why we get entangled in some stuff that God get us out of, and it's twice as hard. I quit smoking, and then I started back. Now it seems impossible for me to stop. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so yeah, you compound them on top of each other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it bring that feeling be so good, and, and next thing you know, you you doing it. And see, here's how you know that you've been had, and that's how the demon is teaching you how to hear his voice, and is teaching you how to correct yourself when you hear it. You see, because God uses everything at his disposal. He used the demons in the earth to accomplish his will and bring man to the proper understanding so that he can be able to discern the demon's voice from his voice. And after you get through working all that out and, and drinking, and then you go and gravitate to the drugs, and then you go and gravitate to the night of all out, all out, uh, all out banging body sexuality and all that. And then you wake up. Up in the morning, God touch you and breathe his life in you with your proper consciousness that you're supposed to have. But you got a little headache, and the headache is there to remind you of what you did yesterday. And it's a little frustration because you've been up so so late that you'd have spent a nice portion of your money, and now you'd have missed half of the day. So you'd have lost a day's worth of pay on top of that. And when you start looking at yourself in your right conscious, you come to understand, why do I keep doing this then you suddenly understand i'm not the one that was doing it it was something that was trying to use me to do what it wanted to do but i had to let him do it i had to let him do it you see i had to let him do it you see we well, see that demon gonna be knocking you know what i mean and we can't avoid living in the world without them our main thing is to recognize that they are there yeah. And they're not there to destroy us because any man that repents or any man that calls on the name of the most high, he puts a blockade on the demons <laughs> and they can't but, do anything. But, but you will destroy yourself 
But I keep letting them in. Well, you, you ain't going <coughs> to destroy yourself. <coughs> it's not you. What we can do is we can end up with a bunch of sad memories mm. of lost opportunities mm. to make the right choice. Because the most high still love us. You know? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and he may, he may free us and make us clean. When we get on our, <coughs> our deathbed, our hands can no longer become yielded vessels for demons. When we incapacitate it, our mind is no longer a yielded vessel to a demon. That's the most high's mercy. Setting us free. From the things that we didn't have the power to control or overcome while we was living. Some people, they hear those voices and they get enlightened. And the Most High gives them the ability to exercise free will and choice. Like like Elder Pat said, he said, you'll know the voice. And, and the only thing that, that it requires is that, no, I'm not letting you into this world today. God took your body so that you can receive punishment. In this world that we are living in, you exist, but because you don't have a body, you are not in contact with the tangible things of this world. And in order for you to come and enjoy the pleasures of this world that God took away from you, all I have to do is tell you no. You can't enjoy the pleasure of, of crack smoking today. You can't enjoy the pleasure that comes from being high and, and freaking and all that. You can't enjoy that pleasure today. You know, I have to find a way to live with my wife and enjoy my wife or enjoy what I've been given uh, in a good frame of mind, in a good consciousness. I don't want to have to be high to lay down yeah. with my woman. Yeah. I don't want to have to be high. In order to make her feel good or make her or the pleasure of her. I don't want to, you see, but all of these things have took an effect on us and we don't know what it is, what's at the root of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's anybody out there that's hearing me, but all of us have been in these situations to where we have done things. Look at how many brothers are in jail because they heard a voice. Man, I wouldn't take that, man. You should kill that nigga. Yeah. He ain't got no business, man. This shouldn't have never. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you're hearing the wrong voice when God know. said his spirit call a man to be humble, to forgive, and he'll be forgiven. To forgive his brother no matter how many times. But that demon's voice, hey, man, you, you ain't no punk. You don't let nobody do you like that. You ain't no punk. You don't love, you don't love them hoes. Sometimes the person he's riding with too got the demon on him. Say he, he's influencing well, it's, what it too. it's what I'm saying. You know it's what I'm saying. It's what I'm saying because they don't know that that's no, not them. They don't know. But here's you know the thing. Here's the thing. They know after they sitting in jail. Mm -hmm. After they sitting in jail and that voice stops speaking to them, and then their true consciousness yeah, raise up cool. and you start see the spirit. most high reminds you of all his good and righteous things you know you think of all those good things mm -hmm. that he does and your consciousness come back and say you know you never had no business why you didn't just do what you knew was yeah. right you know yeah. you you allowed yourself to listen to a voice and many brothers is locked up right now because they allowed themselves to listen to a voice but in their right mind they knew that they would have never done anything like that mm -hmm. you see yeah. they didn't know what it was yeah and we ain't training our children up like that we have to start teaching our children from children how to hear the voice of the most high yeah you see when we when we teach them the things of of, of God and the things that are righteous where living is concerned, yeah. you see, that's they can like, spot a counterfeit right that's, off the that's bat. That's teaching discernment. That's right. Discernment. See, as long as they've been taught in the areas of righteous, they can, dis they can detect another voice. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible say our people perish because they lack knowledge. Mm -hmm. We don't see what's at the root of these things that's happening, you know. Yeah. And so all of us had a capacity to fall victim to demons because That's we have because, come to love the pleasurable all things. Those things that are opposite against the most the, the most high's will for us is a it's a it's a demon spirit. You think we hey, you That's think what I'm saying like th all the way down to you your think diet. when we get through working we won't, we're going to want to throw back a couple of cold ones. Yep. 
You, they you think get, so? They get intensified. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that the Don't only difference is that it. you know it's there. Yeah. And you know what it is. Yeah. And you're yielding yourself to what you know it is because we have become used. Our bodies have, have become used to yeah. that pleasurable thing mm -hmm. that they bring with them. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And this is like, this is like the great fight. It's every man's plight yeah. because every Not man, your flesh. every it's man fell into sin. Every every man, it is your flesh. It's, it's your, your flesh. flesh because when Adam fell into sin, the Most uh, High changed his flesh his own lust. and made it conducive to this world that he had to live in. And because he was led astray by listening to the wrong voices, his children would come into this world hearing the wrong voices, mm. having to fight. To find the true voice. Mm. That's why the only thing that bring us to God. Is when that demon beat him. Beat our head so bad. Beat us down in the ground so bad. That now we say. Man if you is a God. If you God. <laughs> if you really out there. I need some help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But otherwise we wouldn't ask for God. Because yeah. you, you just hear about God in word. Mm -hmm. But you live a daily life. Being defeated by the demon. And once he bring you to a certain place, you know, it's That's easy. Cold. I'm blessed. I'm blessed That's and highly favored. Thing, I, we know God exists because we can see him. But we live our life being beat up every day by a demon. Because we don't know. It's, it's what it is. We think it's us. Now, once he beat us so bad to where we lose everything and we in jail and we then we start talking to God. And now God then put us in the place. To where he gives us our consciousness back. I'm broke. I can't buy crack no more. Yeah. I'm broke. I can't drink up everything no more. You know what <laughs> I mean? But the doctor told me I've got something on my lung. I can't smoke no more. Yeah. You see? So you, I'm in jail no more. I can't. So now we come face to face with our consciousness. And then we look at our life where we at. And then we wonder, how did I get here? And the most I show you how you got here. He said, you got here because I gave you power that came from having a sound mind. But you love yourself more than you love me. So you never allowed your mind to get to a place to where it was sound. You always had to have some noise. You always had to have some chaos. You, you never allowed yourself. And now because that demon that led you to a riotous living and a chaotic life. Now I put you in a place to where you can no longer, you can no longer open the door for them. And if I didn't put you here, you would be destroyed. Yeah. So I put you here so you can't open the door for them anymore. And it's then you start analyzing your life. And then you come in contact with that righteous spirit of forgiveness and of, of love and of mercy and of kindness. And the only thing you want to do is you want to express that back to the most high for loving you. Because now you're yeah. operating by the right spirit. You yeah. see? Yeah. But the thing is that in most cases, a lot of us will end up with nothing but sad memories of lost opportunities. Because we didn't ever understand that. Part. And we didn't understand that. And we pilfered a big portion of our life away. You know what I mean? But when we get put in that place. So I tell our brothers that's coming home from jail, you know what? Hey, man, when you was in your right conscious state, man, behind them bars, praying to the most high, the most high protected the family, protected the kids, protected the grandkids, and then he let you come out here, then you got to be prepared to do what you said you was going to do. You don't come out here and allow them same devils that put you in the place to latch back on to you. You got to get out there and you got to make the most high proud. And and the, the greatest way for it to happen is when we stay in our right consciousness. Mm -hmm. You see, some of us, the most high, ain't never going to let have their pure consciousness back. That was telling the brother yesterday. I said, man, the most high graced you, man, to to just know what it was like to be a waterhead and an alcoholic. And he graced you to be able to just not do nothing no more. And at my worst time, I didn't say nothing, but I was watching you. And I was watching you. We became friends. And you became an outlet and a strength, a source of encouragement that I was able to draw for while I was going through my hardship. I said, but you didn't even know it. But I'm telling you this because you done 
fell down. Mm -hmm. And you done allowed them to get you again. Mm -hmm. But you go back. You know? And I was telling them, I'm saying, I wish, I just say to myself, man, it would be a wonderful thing to ever see my life that it ain't nothing from the outside. Oh, yeah, I'm a man of the most high. Warrior in my spirit and in the word. But you know what? Every now and then, I still want to drink something. Every now and then, I still want to throw back a six-pack. And this is my life. And I got the right to do what I want to do with it. So I was saying, but everything that I do is not me doing it. And these things I understand. But there is a certain pleasure that have came from learning all of these things over the years to where you want to inv I got to invite this demon here right yeah, now because, yeah. I mean, Lord, I done took care of my business. I done loved my wife. I done paid my bills. I ain't messing up like I used to. Yeah, I ain't messing up like I used to. But, but, Lord, just have mercy. Just have mercy and cover me while I'm going in. Because, yeah, yeah. you know what, in the whole time, you know it. Yeah, you see? Yeah. You, you know it. If you definitely pray. Yeah, you that know way, it, man. You know it. And you know what, man? I know what it's like, man. Yeah. I know what it's like, man. You know what you That's powerhouse. A video cause, you know, people need to understand yeah, that. Yeah, man. That, you know. It's a powerhouse, man. Yeah. And I talk about my stuff. I don't care what nobody think about me. It yeah. don't even matter. Because my life ain't mine. Even every good thing I ever done, it was the spirit of the most high that did it. Every bad thing that I will do in the days to come, it ain't me. It's a demon that I can keep yielding myself to because I didn't got used to it and you may you remember them cartoons when you was younger mm -hmm. and they have that the little angel on yeah, there on one side, yeah. mm -hmm. and they had a devil yeah. look like them too so so you know, like tom go ahead and do it now man. there's another scripture that i would like to use and throw in there for the self-righteous man because the self-righteous man is a man that don't really do nothing but the father don't get the glory from it you see that man gloats about what he don't do and how he'll never have no understanding for the things that other people have been through or going through. Now, the Bible says, blessed is the man to whom unrighteousness is not inputted. That means that there is a man on the earth that the Most High have built a force field around that a devil can't even present them with nothing that's against him. You see? And that man right there have to understand that it ain't because you know better than nobody else that you don't smoke, that you don't drink, that you never fornicated, that you didn't wasn't a never wayward chick, that you wasn't have never prostituted your body, that you ain't never been no bad attitude attitude type of female. Like, that ain't because of your like goodness. That ain't your glory. No, nah, that ain't because of your goodness. It's because the most high blessed you. And didn't allow unrighteousness to be inputted in you. So he put a blockade up on you for whatever your purpose is. But in most cases, brothers and sisters don't understand that. And so they start passing judgment on everybody that does something that they don't do. As though the Most High didn't do that for you. If the Most High didn't do that to you, he could have inputted all the unrighteousness and gave all of the demons access to you like he done done so many other people. You see, so, so, but the thing is, is that we cannot live in this world apart from the temptation of demons. They were here, they will always be here, but no demon can harm a man. And demons come to help a man to understand how to hear the Most High's voice versus the demon's voice. Shalom. I wanted to end this on a good note. Shalom Malachi. Malachi. I wanted to end this on a good note. And that that uh, that was another conversation that we was having. And I thought that it would have been good to share that with the brothers and sisters. Because uh, we're yeah, we going we gonna to keep on praying for one another. And keep blessing the Most High to give us eyes to see. And ears to hear. And a heart to understand. Uh, and uh, strive to be the best that we can be. So, all praises, all praises, all praises. Say, I'm looking your age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in a willy wild, but you know, all praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. I still don't feel like I'm that old neither. You know what I mean? So, so all, all praises, all, all praise, all honor, all glory, and uh, hope everybody have a good day.